In the first problem, we have an object with a weight equal to the weight of nine dominoes. And we're sliding it across the table at constant velocity. Now, when we slide it across the table, friction exerts a force in this direction, and our applied force uh, exerts a force in this direction. Since the velocity is constant, acceleration is zero, and it follows then that the net force is zero since the net force is the mass times the acceleration. And that implies then that the sum of this force, the applied force, and the frictional force, which should be indicated with a, an arrow to indicate that it is a vector, has direction, uh, have to add up to zero. Well, this means, of course, that the applied force has to be equal and opposite to the frictional force. They have the same magnitude, but opposite directions. Okay, now, if the applied force is three domino weights, that means uh, on the nine domino object, that means that on a smooth surface, the force exerted by friction is uh, being equal and opposite to this, and therefore having a magnitude of three domino weights is one-third of the weight of the object. Now, there's a way of expressing this. We say that the coefficient of friction is one-third, and we use mu for the coefficient of friction. And we could be even more specific because kinetic and static friction, as you know, are different. So we could say the kinetic friction on the smooth surface is one-third, which would be 0.33 repeating. You could even think of it as 33% or 33 and a third percent. Okay, on the wood surface, the coefficient of friction we find to be four ninths. Why is this? Because the applied force is four domino weights. That force moves this thing along at constant velocity, meaning zero acceleration. So we include that the frictional force also has magnitude of four domino weights, but in the opposite direction of our applied force. So for the wood surface, uh, the frictional force is four ninths being four domino weights, four domino weights, and the weight of the object being nine domino weights, the frictional force is four ninths of the weight of the, do, uh, of the uh, object, so that the coefficient of friction is four ninths. Now, it's worth noting that it's implicit in these questions that we're moving along a level surface. And in fact, then, it follows that the, domino, the weight of the object uh, is equal and opposite to the normal force exerted on the object, and that the normal force between the object and the tabletop is the nine dominoes required to support the weight of the object. And when we define coefficient of friction, the coefficient of friction is what we multiply by the normal force to get the magnitude of the frictional force. So it's implicit in the statement of the problem in the situation uh, that the coefficient of friction is what we multiply by the normal force to get the frictional force. In this case, the normal force is equal to the weight of the object. That, of course, won't always be the case. Okay, now, if the weight of, the, uh, of another object is 14, actually that should be 14 newtons, not 14 dominoes. Let me fix that. Okay, 14 newtons. Then the situation is the same. We're still on a level surface and so forth, and the object is of the same materials, uh, and we're moving over smooth or a wooden, wooden surface. Uh, if we have a 14 newton object, then the applied force, which for the smooth surface is one third of the weight of the object, will again be one third the weight of the object. In this case, one third of 14 newtons, approximately 4.7 newtons. And in the case, that, that's in the case of the smooth surface. In the case of the wood surface, of course, it's going to be four ninths of the weight of the object, just like it was up here. And we don't really need the terminology of a coefficient of friction to reason that out. If the force needed to move the thing across a smooth surface is one third of the weight, then an object of similar material across that smooth surface 
uh, will require still a force one third of its weight, just that the weight is a little different, giving us a different result. And the same idea applies here where we take four ninths of the 14 Newton weight, we get 56 ninths Newton or 6.2 Newtons approximately.